Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here today to review the new Raspberry Pi Model Zero. And those of you who have been following my channel know what a huge fan I am of the Raspberry Pi. On uh, our YouTube channel and on the website toptechboy.com, I think we have 32 different lessons on using the Raspberry Pi. I've been using the Raspberry Pi 3 for some time, and I am just incredibly impressed with it. And the reason I love the Raspberry Pi is it's like you are getting a full-blown Linux machine in something that's the size of the credit card something the size of a credit card and if you combine that with the fact that you can get micro um, uh, uh, micro USB or micro SD cards uh, that are getting pretty big for a pretty low cost you start getting some pretty impressive performance in something that is very low cost and is very small and so because of that I've done a lot of work and done a lot of development on this platform and you know that I really love the Raspberry Pi so you can imagine how excited I was when I heard that they were coming out with a new version of the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi Zero. And what really got my attention and got me excited about this is, is that it is super small, even though the Raspberry Pi is pretty small. I'll uh, get out of the way here. Even though the Raspberry Pi is pretty small already, when you get to the Pi Zero, you're really talking about something that it's like it is about the size of a piece of gum. Okay, it's very, very small. I guess I'm getting a green screen effect on it when I put it up there but you can sort of see the size so it's about the size of a stick of gum and so that really excited me because I started thinking about you know we could begin to explore projects that would maybe be the size of you know something like almost like a pen format and something that you could walk around in your shirt pocket and have something in there that would do uh, something really uh, really impressive the second thing that that excited me about the Raspberry Pi Zero was the thought of maybe hooking it up to the uh, uh, camera module it does have a port that would allow you to hook it up to the camera module so then I start thinking something like very small Raspberry Pi very small camera something to put in your pocket just all types of ideas started coming in so I was very impressed with how small it was and the second thing that impressed me and got me excited was the fact that they said it was going to be five bucks so all of a sudden you've got a full-blown Linux machine the size of a stick of gum something that would fit in your pocket and something that would cost five bucks. So I got very, very excited about it. I ordered some of them. And what I want to talk to you about is kind of a review. I've had a chance to dig into this, had a chance to play with it. So I'd like to just kind of give you my uh, my impression of it. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the, the power and some of the features of it. And maybe the best way to do that is to just kind of compare it, do a, do a comparison with the uh, Raspberry Pi Model 3. Now, certainly the Raspberry Pi Model 3 is bigger and it is more expensive, so we wouldn't expect it to match up feature to feature, but but let's let's just kind of kind of go down the list. The first thing is the Raspberry Pi 3 has four USB ports. That's enough to hook up, uh, you know, your mouse and your keyboard and all the things that you want. Well, the Raspberry Pi Model Zero has uh, a micro USB port and then a micro uh, on the go port. So we've got two uh, micro uh, USB ports. That would kind of let you get the basics. That would let you get a keyboard and a mouse. But with a keyboard and a mouse, you could be uh, kind of up and running. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 has an HDMI output. And the Raspberry Pi Zero has a mini HDMI output. So now all of a sudden we're talking about being able to get full uh, HDMI video out of this thing. The Raspberry Pi 3 has an analog uh, audio out and the, uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero just has the HDMI uh, audio. Uh, neither one of them have audio in. 
Uh, both of them have uh, SPI pins, uh, both of them have I2C pins, and both of them have GPIO pins. So that's sort of giving you a lot to work with as far as connectivity. And again, one of the reasons I really love the original Raspberry Pi is, is that on one hand, it kind of starts acting like a full-blown desktop computer. I mean, the... Uh, the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 has a gigabyte of RAM and it has four cores. It has the uh, Cortex A53 64-bit core and so that's getting to be pretty powerful with a gigabyte of RAM, 1.2 gigahertz clock speed and four cores you're talking about something pretty powerful so it, in one hand it almost acts like a desktop but on the other hand it gives you these access this access to all of these GPIO pins and other pins so that on one hand you're acting like a desktop but on the other hand it's kinda like the Arduino you can get in there and get to the inputs and the outputs and you can start hooking it up to things and start doing things and so that's one of the reasons we really got excited about the original Raspberry Pi and the good thing is you've still got those capabilities on the Raspberry Pi Zero. So what, what's the power of the Raspberry Pi Zero? Well, instead of having four cores like the Pi 3, the Pi Zero only has one core. Well, the thing is, is that that's okay because we're not trying to use this as a desktop computer. What we're trying to do is we're trying to walk around with a cool little gadget in our pocket or something that fits in a very small space at a low cost. You know, it's, it's about uh, portability, it's about compactability, it's about low cost, it's just like that's going to open up a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities. So as far as the power goes, I am perfectly happy with the fact that the Raspberry Pi Zero has half the memory, has 512 megabytes, a little smaller clock speed, one gigahertz, and then just has, uh, it just has one core instead of four cores. So we're okay. We still have access to all the pins here, all these uh, different GPIO pins and I2C pins and so forth. I also really like the fact that this, I guess you would call this, it comes uh, headless. It doesn't come with pins on it because by this time in the game we should be able to solder and I just like the fact that I can solder whether I want the, the type of header that I want for the application and so I actually kind of like it that it doesn't have a header on it. That's one of the things I don't like about the Beagle Blown black it's got the header soldered on you can't get the kind of headless version of it and it has female connectors which sort of limits you to plugging in wires which then as you start trying to really ramp up towards a prototype kind of that uh, that lack of flexibility gets into the uh, gets in the way so uh, as we continue to go on, we're, we're really impressed with all the things that we're seeing. Really, really neat that they include the connector for the camera. Notice that you do have to have a different cable. You can't use the same cable that came with the, the, the camera for the Pi 3. You have to get a, a camera that sort of necks in as it goes in because of the small width of the Pi Zero you have to get a special cable. But that's, uh, that's okay. We're still doing, uh, doing good. Both the Pi 3 and the Pi Zero work on a micro SD, uh, micro SD cable. Okay, so at this point you can see that I was just really, really excited and the first thing that I was going to do was go in and create a streaming IP camera, sort of like our last video and uh, on TopTechBoy.com, Raspberry Pi Lesson 38, where we show you how to build a streaming video uh, system where you can stream uh, uh, an IP camera, basically stream to a browser from the Raspberry Pi 3. And man, that worked great. Hope, hopefully you'll go back and watch that video. What I was excited about was kind of doing the same thing, only with the Pi Zero, so you could have something that imagine the size of a fountain pen that would fit in your pocket and as you walk around you could be streaming video to uh, to a Wi-Fi a Wi-Fi network and so the other kind of thing I was getting really excited about about the Raspberry Pi Zero I've been kind of wanting to start playing around with supercomputers and, and you know there's a lot of open source software that you can build supercomputers from and I was thinking man if this uh, if this Raspberry Pi Zero is five bucks, maybe I could buy a hundred of them, or maybe I could buy a thousand of them, and I could build a supercomputer, and then we could start doing some really cool and interesting supercomputer projects. And so I can I just can't tell you how excited I was to get this Raspberry Pi Zero in. And then I realized when I got it in, what I consider to be the fatal flaw of the Raspberry Pi Zero. The mistake that was made 
in the architecture or the design of this thing that really to me kills it. And that is that the Raspberry Pi Zero does not have an Ethernet port built in, it doesn't have an Ethernet connection, and it does not have Wi-Fi. Okay, I understand that when you make things smaller, you have to give up things. When you make things that cost five dollars, you have to give up things. But it's almost like the way they went is they went in the direction of, hey, let's have this thing where it can act like a computer so you can plug in a keyboard and you can plug in a uh, mouse and you can plug in a monitor and you've got something the size of a stick of gum that will act like a computer. Okay, the problem is, is that if I have to put a keyboard on it, and I have to put a mouse on it, and I have to put a screen on it, I don't care that it's the size of a stick of gum and not the size of a credit card. At that point, that size difference does me no good. What would do me good is if I could put this in a little box and put it in my pocket and rock, walk around. But I can't put it in a little box and put it in my pocket and walk around because it doesn't have Wi-Fi. Okay, now you say, well, get a Wi-Fi dongle. Well, darn it, I really am not aware of any, you know, certainly wouldn't be low cost, and I'm not aware of any micro USB Wi-Fi dongle, okay? So it's almost like we're going to have to buy a micro USB to normal USB cable, and then we're going to have to put the Wi-Fi dongle onto that. And these darn little cables, I would imagine you could spend five or ten dollars for the cable and then five or ten dollars for the Wi-Fi uh, uh, module. So all of a sudden for me to get to Wi-Fi I'm gonna spend more on the little cable than I spent on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Okay so you say well stop being a tightwad and just shell out the money. Yeah but you see the thing is is that I hate dongles. When I have this thing you know, I want to put this in a box. I don't want to have something hanging off and something hanging off because as you go from sort of a, a breadboard on the bench top to a prototype, a prototype is something that is not a product but looks like a product, something that you could demonstrate what you're trying to do. I don't want to have these doofus dongles hanging off of it. So there is a cost and there is a sort of not product worthiness associated with having to use uh, having to use dongles. And so I think what really was needed is, okay, I could understand maybe why you did not put the Ethernet port on here, but good grief, put the Wi-Fi on there. And in fact, you know, don't give me the HDMI output, don't give me one of the USB ports and put the Wi-Fi on there. And if you had to charge $10, charge $10 for it. But don't give me something that's small that I really can't build something to put in my pocket or, you know, put in a, put in a place that I need something uh, small and low cost. And so, unfortunately, guys, I, as excited as I am about Raspberry Pi, as much as I love what the Raspberry Pi guys are doing, I'm going to have to say that this Raspberry Pi Zero is not going to be good and not something that I'm going to recommend to you and not something that I at this point plan on pursuing. I don't plan on going in and doing a video series on neat little projects. I mean similarly think about this thing I wanted to build uh, you know I wanted to build supercomputers and you see that these have the little holes in it so I could imagine stacking these things up and if I went 10 by 10 by 10 and put a fan I could have a thousand processors and I could start doing something but it's not gonna work because I would have to buy the silly dongles you know and it's not cool to have a thousand computers each one with these dongles hanging off you know one of them's gonna come loose or something it's just uh, it's just not gonna it's not gonna work and so love you guys at Raspberry Pi but what you need to do is you need to not think of this as far as something with a keyboard and a mouse on it and a screen. You need to think of this as something that you would be puttying into or SSHing into or remote desktoping into. Have a little Wi-Fi and then you, you get what you really want which is portability, mobility, concealability. All of those are the exciting things 
when you're trying to do Raspberry Pi projects. And so uh, this has been uh, kind of a short video, and I hate to say as much as I wanted to love the Raspberry Pi Zero. Another one other problem, one other problem is they advertise them for five bucks, but you really can almost never find them. Okay, and the problem is where you find them available, they're trying to sell you the kit. And the kit is going to end up costing 40 bucks because they want to sell you the little wall ward and they want to ship, sell you the little cords and cables and it's 40 bucks. And virtually nowhere can you find one for five bucks. And when they come available for five bucks, they are available for a short time and then they disappear. Okay, and so I just noticed Adafruit has them in stock as the time I was making this video. I imagine they will probably once again be out, uh, uh, out of them, and then Adafruit has a limit of one per customer. Well, that makes sense because a guy would come in like me and order a thousand of them or something, and then no one would ever be able to get them. And so they're advertised for five bucks, but it's a little bit of a gimmick because if you really wanted to use them, you're going to have trouble, at least at the time that I'm making this video, and kind of in my opinion, you're going to have trouble really getting them, and especially especially getting them for uh, for five bucks. So as much as I love the Raspberry Pi 3 and as much as I wanted to love the Raspberry Pi Zero, unfortunately, I got to give it the thumbs down and I got to say that I'm going to stick with the Raspberry Pi 3 or I'm going to stick with the Arduino, but I am not going to be doing any development work right now on the Raspberry Pi Zero until they put Wi-Fi on the board. Okay, appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you like it, think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel or sharing this video. We should be coming up with some other reviews shortly. There is a new microprocessor coming out, a new platform that I am at this point kind of excited in, uh, on. Uh, it's called the Onion, and I will be doing a the Onion Omega 2. Plus, I will be doing a review on that shortly. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.